So for the first day of class, we're going to jump right into programming. What I want to do first of all is, you know, jump right in and do some programming because I want you to see we're going to do a lot of programming from day one. And we have a process and we have a lot to do and a lot to cover. And I want you to see kind of trial by fire right away. We're going to do a lot of programming. And if you're finding it difficult, it should tell you, talk to me. Let's see what you need to succeed. Um, let's figure it out. I don't want you to struggle in a class that is not going to be worth it to you. So right away we're going to do some programming. Now, eventually, in part two, we're going to use Microsoft Visual Studio. You don't need to open it right now. Don't open it right now. Next month, we're going to start using this because this is what's going to let us create these apps that then we'll, we'll, let, we'll be able to compile them to the devices. We don't need that yet. And that, if you want to download it and such, that's like a 10 gigabyte download. We don't need that yet. I'll cover that next month. This month, we're going to cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, basic web, web languages. And with those basic languages, we're going to be able to create an interface for our app, animation in our app. We're even going to be able to access databases. Uh, we're going to be able to do a lot in simply HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the next month, we're going to upgrade that humble web project into a real app, a real app that you that people will be able to download from the app stores. So this month, we're going to use a, a, a cool, simple uh, code editing software. Uh, if you go to your Start menu and you search Notepad++, that's what we're going to use. Now, we also have, I think, here Sublime Text and RoboCode or whatever. If you're used to programming in Atom or Sublime or Text Wrangler or whatever, you could. But I'm going to use Notepad++. It's a free download. It's a small, quick app for you to code in any language. Um, that's the one we want. So in the Start menu, search Notepad++. Not Notepad. That one's terrible. Notepad++. If you try to do this at home, you have to download it because Notepad++ does not come with your computer on Windows. You get Notepad, plain old Notepad. You want Notepad++, free download from notepadplus.com, whatever the site is. I launch the program, it needs an update, just cancel. If you get any pop-ups, just cancel those pop-ups. This is the software we're going to use. Up on the top left corner, let's go to File, New. Now, because I want to jump into this right away, I also want you to get a sense of how the class will run and the rhythm and so forth. I've taught this class, this particular class, uh, for four years now. I've taught at this college for uh, about nine years. I've taught at Southwestern College for ten years. So I have experience in teaching. I have experience in teaching programming, web design, graphic design, a bunch of things. And I have experience in the real world, too, making apps, making websites for clients, photography, lots of things. So I say that because sometimes I'm having so much fun, I don't slow down. And that's okay for you to tell me, can you repeat that? Now, I am going to record all of this, and you will be able to replay it whenever you want. And you are able to ask questions at any point. But sometimes I get ahead of myself. So at any point, you can raise your hand. So uh, we've got a brand new file. Let's go to File, Save As. This that we're going to create right now is not really mission critical. This is going to be a quick, fun thing to do. We may or may not continue to work on it on Thursday. We'll see. But I want to start to create something. If you have a flash drive, you can plug that in and save your work. At the end of the day, also, I'm going to put a copy of my code, usually, in the network folder. So you can compare your code with my code. If yours didn't quite work, check my code. I'll help you and such. But I'll put my code in the network folder at the end of the day. So we're going to create a project. Um, today's date, 2017 09 05.html. 
save as type hypertext markup language. So notepad plus plus, we're going to create a file, call it whatever, today's date, dot HTML, type dot HTML. The first couple of class lectures for some of us might be very slow because I need to also get a sense of a gauge of the class. I, of course, want to jump into the advanced stuff. It's okay that we're not advanced yet. So I want to start from the beginning with a blank document and do some basic HTML and CSS and JavaScript to kind of get a sense of how the class will run. If you've never uh, programmed in HTML, again, this book is really good. I'm not going to cover this book page by page, chapter by chapter. I can't. We need to add another month to the class or more. So this book or the other links that I had on the syllabus, w3schools.com, jQueryMobile.com, etc., they will give you more information on these basic things. So HTML, if you've never used it before, is made out of tags. We have these angle brackets. On the keyboard, we have the comma and the period, shift angle brackets, less than, greater than. And again, in the beginning, we're going to perhaps go a little slow, but we're going to go pretty fast, pretty quickly. So let's write this. This is our first code of HTML, angle bracket or less than, exclamation point, doc type, space, HTML, greater than. It's all lowercase. And this is defining our document type, our type of project, is HTML, HTML5. Next line. Again, I'm going to use shorthand very quickly because I'm not going to say over and over, angle bracket, HTML, angle bracket. I'm going to start to use shorthand by saying HTML tag, image tag, link tag. The HTML tag is a pair of tags, a pair of code that says start my HTML project, end my HTML project. You should see a difference. So HTML tag slash forward slash the slash HTML. Everything in between is a website, is a web project. Line 3, I'm going to press tab, which is optional, but then I'll write um, head, enter a couple of times, close head. Okay, head tag, angle brackets, head, angle brackets, slash head. This connects. If you click on it, if you click on a tag, it should show its pair. Inside of head, I'll write this title tag. So my shorthand is, I don't need to say every single time opening and closing tags, starting and finishing. 99% of HTML code will have a pair. Some tags won't. Doc type doesn't. But all of these do. Start my main HTML, end it. Start the head, whatever that is, which I'll explain, and the head. Start the title, and the title. Inside of title, I'll write, hello world. So I wrote here some human-readable code, surrounded by a bunch of machine-readable code. HTML tags. Our process is going to be we're going to write some code, we're going to save the code, then we're going to run the code. So we've written some code, you can go to File Save, or get used to clicking the Save icon, or Control S. Save the code. And then up on the Run menu, we have the various web browsers where we can run our code. HTML is an interpreted language. 
other languages. You might have heard of them as a compiled language or a runtime language and so forth. This is interpreted. These tags are interpreted to do something. The interpreter is the web browser. Kind of technical details, not really, really important. But the web browser translates the tags into something. So we need to run our code. Pick any browser you want. I'm just going to go with Firefox. This is the first one at the top. So save your code, run your code, launch Firefox. The web browser will load up. It will process your code. It looks like I have an empty screen. Well, no. I have the message, hello world, up on the tab of the web browser. I wrote hello world in the title in the web browser. Nothing appears in the main body, the main viewport, the main area, because I haven't marked that. HTML, hypertext markup language, a language where I'm marking. Let's mark this as a title. It's marked. I'm going to mark something as appearing over here. This is the body. So after the head, I'll create the body tag to mark content to appear in the body. So line 8, body. And the world again. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Or you can just refresh the browser. But this is going to be our rhythm. Write code, save the code, launch or run the code. Let's pause there. Do you get a result something like mine? If at any point you're not, raise your hand. I'll help you out. We can help each other out. But if you do so, I ask that you do it at a reasonable volume. It's very easy to distract your neighbor as you're helping another neighbor. So everyone gets something like this. Hello world here. Hello world again here. And hello world here.
All right, so, so this little bit of code here, so this little bit of code here, these uh, 11 lines or so, this is a very, very quick but complete HTML project. This has the definition that this is an HTML project, technically HTML5. Then we've got our code that opens and starts, and this is our complete website, HTML to HTML. There's the head, head content, which appears up on the tab, and then body content, which appears in the main area. So this is a complete HTML project. Um, the tabbing, which I just said to do it, but I didn't explain, in HTML, it doesn't matter if you do these tabs or not. This would, look, this would work exactly the same as if it was all like that, without any tabbing. HTML doesn't care. Actually, the web browser doesn't care. The web browser will see that code and still process it. But for the human, this is a lot harder to read compared to that. That's a lot easier to read. There's this part indented here because it's this. And this part is indented because it's that. So that's, I usually, I'm very liberal about adding a lot of tabs and spaces for the readability. And I recommend you do it too, especially if you're starting off. Because the computer won't care, it will process that, no problem. But that's harder for us to read. Um, again, if at any point something doesn't make sense, raise your hand. Um, this code that we're writing, so yes? So what, what if I want to type things in the middle of what's the problem here? In order for us to be able to target this to appear in the center, that's going to be CSS code. Right now, HTML code is just for the content. But we're not really defining how does it look yet, and that's going to be CSS. So as we're writing this code, it might be a good idea, especially if you're a beginner, to make yourself notes. What I just said about that tabbing in CSS, that might be a good idea maybe to write a note about it. So in HTML, we have a tag that will create a comment, which will not be run by the browser. It's just for us. We can make comments like this. Let's say in body right here, uh, one line above that hello world again, press enter. I want to make a comment. Now I'm tabbing, I'm indenting everything that is about a piece of the code. So I tab it right there. And there's a tag here, which is an angle bracket, exclamation point, dash dash, space, dash dash, greater than. Everything in here. is a comment. So that won't be processed by the browser. This is actually also what is known as a multi-line comment because I can press enter and break that into multiple lines. This is a multi-line comment. Anything in between the open close tags is a comment, is deactivated. is not going to be processed by, by the web browser. So I had it on one line a moment ago. Be careful here. I did not press enter at the end of the line. I pressed enter before the end of the tag, and then created two lines that then complete the comments. One way to make sure you're doing this right is look at the color coding. All of this is green. 
start the comment green, end the comment green. If anything else is still green, like down here, there's a problem. My comment started, I never ended it. So now suddenly this code is deactivated and doesn't work. Or, if you did it like this, start the comment, end the comment, and I press enter, the browser is going to expect this to be code, which it's not. And that will cause errors, most likely. So this color coding is not just for something pretty to look at. It helps you understand if your code is properly set up. If your color coding looks very different from mine, there's probably a problem. Yes? Press enter. Press enter. I pressed enter before the end of the tag. So you can make yourself comments anywhere you want to explain to yourself what the code is doing. And I highly recommend you do that, especially if you're a beginner. And as we get more complex with JavaScript, I'm going to write a lot of comments, because JavaScript is, is the hardest one. HTML, honestly, easy. CSS, kind of easy. JavaScript, hard. When we get to JavaScript, we'll see that it's kind of hard. Uh, so it's good to comment. Um, I didn't um, really mark uh, this hello world as anything. It just then processed it. I'm going to go back and instead add this tag of h1 ending with h1. Every other tag I've written so far looks like I'm putting it in its own line. With this one, I started it here and I ended it on the same line. That's also valid. Having it on one line like this, as long as the tag, the pair of tags is properly written, is just fine. If instead I had broken this up into multiple lines, you don't have to do this, but if I had done it like this, exact same thing. Sometimes it's more economical to type less or do less effort on one line or multiple lines. Um, whatever works. So, our process. You write the code, you save the code, you run the code. Now, that text is big, big and bold and important looking because I've marked it H1. That's a number one, not an L, H1. <clears throat> Comment. Created a heading one that made the code, I made the text, big and bold. That's what that, that did here. H1 made it big and bold. Next line, line 15, um, p tag, p for paragraph. So the thing about HTML, this is a language that was invented in about 1989 by a student at a university in Europe. And um, he gave out this code for free to the world. He didn't copyright it, he didn't lock it down. Uh, he gave it free. And honestly, that invention changed the world. This that we're writing here changed the world. HTML code changed the world. Look at how much we spend online, how much time we spend. Facebook, Instagram, online banking games, websites. There was nothing quite like that until 1989. And then the world started to get online in about 1991. And then 
you know, I remember visiting my first websites in 1994. You know, that's more than 20. That's 25 years ago that this language has been around, and it's changed the world. The great thing about it is it's relatively easy to learn. This 500-page book covers HTML and CSS, so it's not a lot to learn about how to make a basic website. You just need to know the right code, the right tag, to accomplish the right task. I created a tag of heading 1 to make something big and bold. That's the purpose, h1. The purpose of p is to make a paragraph. This is my very first website. For some of you, not, not for others. This is my very first website. Enter. I am going to learn a lot of things. Enter. It will be fun. Save it and run it. See what happens. See how the p tag did something. That HTML code marked your text. The web browser processed that tag, displays it on screen. Looks like I created a paragraph here. I wrote something, I pressed enter, I wrote something, pressed enter, and I pressed enter. So this should be a cool looking paragraph. Well, if you run it, it doesn't quite look like what I envisioned. It didn't break it into multiple lines. This paragraph processed this as one complete line. One complete line. I have to be specific. I have to mark my code of what I want. I wanted to break this line and break that line and so forth. So if we add a br for break tag at the end of the line, that's what that's for. Basically what I'm getting at is that every tag has a task. Every tag has a purpose. I want to create an image, so I use the image tag. I want to create a paragraph, I create the p tag. I, create, I want a, a link, I, I use the link tag. There's a tag for a task. That's the point of HTML. And then now that breaks it into multiple lines. In the question earlier about, well, how do I put it in the center and change colors and all of that? That's CSS. Let's throw in a little bit of CSS code. This is a different language. HTML is one language, and it has a purpose, structure. CSS is another language and has another purpose. Visuals, design. So let's write a little CSS. What I want to do is go back to body, tag, and I want to change the default built-in behavior of body. The built-in behavior of the body tag is a white background, black text in the beginning, the first websites were black text, gray background. Now it's commonly black text, white background. That's the common built-in behavior to body. I want to sort of redefine it via CSS. So this is a body tag. I'm going to add an attribute. Between the Y and the greater than, I put a space, so I'm in the body tag. I'm going to add an attribute called style. And if you know anything about CSS and HTML and such, you're probably cringing at what I'm doing because we shouldn't really do this. We have better ways to do this, at embedded or external CSS. Yes, I know, but it's day one. So we're going to add style to the body. We're going to redefine the the style via CSS equals quote end quote. There's an attribute called style that we're adding onto the body tag. The attribute is style. We're going to say background dash color colon space. Think of any color. Say pink. Semicolon. This is the syntax to write CSS. There is a property that I'm targeting, the background color. 
and then there is a value that I'm setting, pink. And that is all an attribute of the body tag. I'll write these terms in a moment. You see, there's a lot of jargon. And for us to really communicate as web designers or app designers, we need to know the jargon. And maybe in the beginning you won't quite get it, but as we do it over and over, it should stick. And again, a good book will also guide you. Yes? It's sort, of, it's sort of like an end of statement, yes. We're saying, let's set the background color, the end. Let's set it to pink, I'm done. So if you save it and run it, we get a very cool Pepto-Bismol colored background. And we use CSS to redefine the basic color. Maybe pink isn't what you're looking for. What about blue? What about red, yellow? So it's optional? It's optional because all of these tags have built-in properties. But I'm redefining those built-in properties to force it to be yellow, or red, or pink. So here, I've set a different background color. Question? Style equal, and then I'm fancy with the next thing. You've got a quote, and then background color, and then end of quote. Equal background color, what is that? Equal. Uh, equal. Equal. Yes. So, this is one CSS definition. Let's say when we learn how to change colors and such, we want to use the coolest color, black. And it's going to look very cool, but now I can't see the text, so we need to write some code to change the look of the text. Question? How did you make the change so fast? Because I click save and then I click refresh, so it that It should. Well, I'm just using keyboard shortcuts very quickly. Yes. You can use Control s to save, and then you can use uh, control alt shift x to jump to the browser so background color black and it looks black but I can't see the text so I need to change the property the color the text color property I've targeted the background color property, but now I need to change the color, text color property. So I said earlier that semicolon is like end of statement, but in CSS it's a little bit more like do something and then do something else, semicolon, and then do something else. So I also want to change the text color. Well, if I have a background dash color, I probably have a text dash color. And that would make great sense, but unfortunately, when they invented this, no one had that great idea. They called it simply color. <coughs> color means text color. And the syntax is color, colon, and then you pick a color, white, semicolon. So I'm targeting first the background color property and setting the value to black, semicolon. And then I'm setting the text color Proper, uh, property to the value of white, semicolon again. That's an end of statement, so to speak. That's an end of statement. And all of that is part of the style property attached to the body tag. Our result is white text, black background, or yellow background, brown text. I'm going to write a comment here. So body tag with a style attribute.
background color property and yellow value. So technically though that, that's what we wrote on a, on a technical level. You know that line of code there. It's a body tag that has a style attribute, background color property, and yellow value set. This is your very. This is the tip of the iceberg of CSS. This is the other half of the book. 250 pages on HTML. 250 pages on CSS. Both of them are covered in one book. And the thing about HTML and CSS, you don't need to have every tag memorized. You don't have to have every property memorized. All you have to do is have the ability to look it up when you need it. I. I want to impress people by being able to regurgitate every tag, sure, but only a few people will care. But I want to be able to regurgitate every single HTML attribute, but only a few people will care. I just need to know the right tag at the moment. And honestly, myself, it looks like, you know, I, I know it all, and I almost do, but I just need to be able to look it up. When I, when I create an app, I don't have every single code memorized at that moment. I'm writing my code, I might have to refresh my memory, visit a website, check the book, look it up online, and I write the code. So the thing about learning HTML and CSS and JavaScript is you don't have to have it all memorized. You just have to look it up. So that was some CSS. We can do the same thing with um, with H1. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and that very technical term will make sense right now. In that, I wrote this code and it cascaded down. What else cascades in the real world? A waterfall. So. HTML and JavaScript and CSS, basically, when you write the code, it will be processed in that order. So if I wrote early on, style, background, color, yellow, and text color, brown, that will cascade, that will wash over everything below. So I never defined specifically or explicitly anything on each one. <coughs> this was inherited, it went down there, and it became brown and yellow. So if I go to h1 and also add style, attribute, I'm going to be careful about the syntax, look at the code, the colors, purple for the tag, yellow uh, for the attribute, red. Red doesn't mean it's wrong or I misspelled it, it just means that's the color that they chose to delineate attributes. But I wrote that style attribute inside of the tag. Yes? Oh, it's not colored, but it's just black and white. Is there a view of what to the teacher? When you did your save, at, when you, did your save uh, you needed to make sure you selected save as type HTML. If it's still not doing it, you can go up to language and set HTML language. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm writing this style and it doesn't appear the code that it doesn't appear the color that your instructor is showing you, that's again one of these things that perhaps it's not quite set right. So here we can do the same thing: background color, background to dash color. Uh, let's say here pink, um, color of text, red. So I've been picking these colors, but there's also more colors to, to choose from. Gold, you do gold and silver. That's not going to shine like gold or silver. That doesn't really look very goldy or silvery. That's gold and silver. There's a list of about 114 predefined colors. So not every color is is defined with a name. You know, if I try purple, yeah, that one exists. If I try chartreuse, well, 
those that might not exist, or is it with a C? Chartreuse? No. Those that might not exist just are ignored. So if I'm trying to do, you, know, you saw you saw gold worked and silver worked. Uh, is that bronze? If something doesn't exist, it'll just ignore it. Platinum. Yeah, so it's ignoring it. So um, I set those values. There's, a, there's 114 colors that are named. Um, we will see that we can also create color formulas. Let's do it this way. Instead of having a, you know, a named color, what we can do is RGB parentheses. Here I'm going to mix red, green, and blue. Some amount of red, some amount of green, some amount of blue. Uh, these units. It goes from 0 to 255. So let's say I put 100 units of red, comma, 20 units of green, comma, 0 units of blue. There's going to be some shade of red, RGB. Some red, some green, some blue. 100 uh, red, 20 green, and zero blue. So it's a shade of red, kind of brown. It's a shade. RGB, let's say, put a little bit of red, a lot of green, 200, and a little blue, 25. It's a shade of blue, I mean a shade of green. There is green, there's like four or five shades of green that are named a uh, color. But that named color is not the color of my company. That red, you know, Coca-Cola red is a very specific shade of red. Or the blue in Facebook, it's a very specific shade of blue. If I were just to write blue, that would probably not be the right color of my company. So we can write a color formula. So I have this so far. Take a, let's take one more break just to see if we're on the right track here. When we come back, then we'll add some more code regarding images and links and so forth. But here's what I've got so far. If you're having any trouble, call me over. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. It's 7.55. We'll be back at 8.05. We'll go on.